Well, that was a perfect passage. Um, it was so perfect, it was boring at times. <laughs> flat seas, flat Mona passage, no thorns in the thorny path, and I just got tired of filming flat seas, and so we didn't film a whole lot of it. Um, it was amazing. And if you did notice, uh, Dave is not with me. He is finishing up some things, and he will join me in two weeks, but our friend actually flew over to the Dominican Republic and uh, helped me bring Turtle over. Um, I didn't record them because we respect our friends' privacies and don't want to stick the camera in their face, but he was incredible. I couldn't have soloed this. I am not ready to solo this, you know, it, it, with my wrist and just with my experience. I Turtle is not. Um, she's great for a solo sailor. I am not a good solo sailor, so it was great to have company. But yeah, we sat for most of the days and our shifts just sort of in the cockpit motor ran beautifully no issues this time and no like big disasters with the boat sail was a main sail was an issue and get that taken care of here in st martin but yeah i mean i now it's just a matter of settling in uh getting the boat nice and clean and comfortable and also uh working because i do work two days of the week so uh getting that done but yeah the day after we came it's 20 knots blowing outside like we missed this really bad weather we had just the most amazing time, and I can't believe that we got it all done in one shot. Um, and it's just, yeah, just cannot believe it. Most people take like two weeks to do this because they keep having to stop because of bad weather. But nope, easy peasy, hardest part done. Now we just get to enjoy the Caribbean once Dave gets here. But once this weather settles down, we'll blow up that dinghy, go into shore, get to start enjoying some nice French food, some Caribbean food. I am waiting for my roti and jerk. I cannot wait. But for today, for now, um, I wait out this bad weather by actually getting back to work. So I gotta go, I gotta go log in to see some patients soon. Whee! Okay. So usually the boards go in and there's this latch that goes into this guy that gets basically like this, and it gets locked up, and we're all really, really secure. These are solid teak, so that's not a problem, but well, that's a problem. So, can't really use this lock and this, even if I turn this board around. Um, that's not something that I can use to lock on the inside. So, there we go. Okay, so first we turn this in or in around and we close this and the problem is the lock guy is here and even then it wouldn't really be helpful because of the angle and so the I was thinking last night the point is if I can get this let me actually show you if I can get this to stay here and lock this like this so let's say I can do this and keep it here somehow and lock it, then this would block this door from opening. And this would be yet another barrier for anybody to try to come in. So the point is, I gotta figure out a way to hang a lock here. Okay, so to do that, I think I found this in our sort of box of random stuff. And if I install it like this, and I have them next, maybe on this side, next to each other, oh, then the lock can go through. And so this is attached to this again. So let's try it. The rain stopped, yay! And everything is drying. These were the tether lines that I had ready to put up if the weather got bad, but our friend, my friend came over, uh, helped me put the dinghy down. She blew up great, but of course, the outboard is not starting. Uh, so I'm going to get my hat, I'm gonna cold water, and I'm gonna go spend probably a god-awful amount of hours figuring out the outboard because while we don't have blue and pink jobs on the boat on Turtle, the outboard specifically is Dave's baby, and it is not my baby. <laughs> so we're gonna have to start a relationship together and see if, uh, we can internalize the love before uh, I chuck it back in the water and go buy a new one. I won't, but the threat needs to be felt. Um, I'm gonna fill, I got this 
awesome. Ooh, my little, my little Kraken bag. I'm gonna fill it with tools and hat and water. And we're gonna go sit in that dinghy until we can move on a gasoline powered engine. Darn it. Yeah. Okay. What do I need? Make sure you have done the multiple hours of trying this thing. So, first thing we did was fill fresh gas in, make sure this was open, and pumped our little guy, checked the filter, this was filling, but after many, many hours of work. So we've now taken the carburetor apart. Oh, oh, we just got a big wake. All right, so the inside of the carburetor looks pretty clean. Um, there's like the, the oh, the o-ring looks fine. There's like a little bit of smudge there, but that looks fine. So either it's this hose or it's something more. Something more means an outboard house. I will check the char uh, spark plugs later, but when I pump, it comes through here, it goes through this hose, it comes out of here. So we know up till here is fine. And so this hose and the carburetor we thought were the issue, but it doesn't look like it. So yeah, we'll keep... I will win. I got quite an education, so I'm going to pass it forward. So basically, when I looked at this, everything was super clean. And somebody came over and they were talking to me and they told me that there's a jet right here. Sorry. There's a jet. This little brass thing is a jet. Uh, which aerosolizes the gasoline to come in here. That could have been blocked up, so we undid it, and guess what? It was blocked! So we cleaned that up, and it was so funny. The, oh, spit down, spit down. Two years ago, I bought this, guys. Out of, we tried to clean it with just carb cleaner and tissue, but it was really blocked, and so, Two years ago, I bought these guys and they came in handy today. So we used that very, very, very carefully. We didn't narrow the space, uh, open up, widen up the space, but we cleaned the first jet that's in here. We cleaned the second jet that's down in there, deeper inside by turning it upside down. And now let's put it back together and let's see if I've got a net working outboard. I also got this guy off and blew through him and he was nice and clear. So, and then I cleaned up this. So, let's put it back together. Let's see. Got the lock, I put the clip in, let me show you. So, so there we go, and we go in, and we clip. So I think the problem is this lock is way, way too small, but just a slightly larger one, and we're all locked in. Project locked myself in is a success. I'm trying to find an angle away from me. <laughs> Uh, it is blowing about 15 knots or so. Uh, not how I like to go into a marina, but here it is. I've got, um, it's funny. So what's amazing is uh, there's actually another caliber here. So caliber is the make of our uh, boat. Uh, we have another caliber here who's a 47 foot center cockpit. Uh, beautiful boat, oh my God. If that had shown up in our thing, um, in our search and was affordable, uh, definitely like, it's it's like, one, it's, it's, turtle is perfect for two people, but just like a touch tight um, with, you know, everything. Uh, I feel like a 47 foot boat, obviously, is just a little bit more comfortable, but not so big that you don't feel like you can handle her. But anyway, beautiful boat. I'm rambling. It's very early. The sun is barely up. Um, the causeway bridge opens at uh, 8 a.m., but I, there's a whole bunch of going to go get to people. So the people running the caliber are helping move 
my boat is what I meant to say 10 minutes ago. Taking the dinghy, I'm going to pick them up, bring them back, basically teach them about turtle and all the little things she does and does not do. Uh, then our friend is coming to pick up our dinghy, take it to their boat, keep it safe so that when she goes stern in, I can still use the dinghy. Um, and then he's going to drive the dinghy over to the marina. <laughs> and then I will take the dinghy and drive our friends back to their caliber boat when they're all the way out here. So uh, it's about a 20 minute ride. And then go to the French side, check out, which I should have done, but uh, it's too early. They're not open. Um, go to the French side, check out, come back to the Dutch side, check in, and then go to work <laughs> at the workspaces, which I found, which is amazing, and I'm gonna show you later today when I get there. Um, amazing place to work with, quiet. Our Starling has, um, has had some issues, which also we'll talk about. Uh, a big sort of warning for uh, anybody who has Starlink, who relies on it for work, um, and kind of has to work um, on a on basically you know daily basis. Uh, definitely like a good to know information coming up. Lots of things coming up, but for now, um, I think step one is to prep prep the boat so that other people don't have to do a lot, um, and tell the air gods or the Arashari, or whoever is up there, stop it, um, calm down, but going, gonna go, gonna go start this day, uh, probably won't record most of it, I'm gonna try, but, uh, again, when I have people on the boat, especially helping me, I'm not gonna pick up a camera and talk to it, um, while they're doing all the work, it's just not nice, so, hopefully, see you in the marina. I've only seen them go up and down. As expected, just when we started to get in, I forgot to turn the camera on because it was mayhem. So we, but we are in, we are in a very tight but comfortable slip. It's actually the first time when the boat next to us, I don't know if you can see it, but the boat next to us, uh, there's no finger pier in between us. So usually there's a, like, a, a, a dock part that comes out. It's called a finger pier. And that's where you can get off the boat. Uh, in this case, I get off the boat behind me. So I go to the back of the boat and get off. And actually our kind of short swim platform has made that uh, really, really nice. So let me show you the real update. So two days after, it's been three days since I picked up the camera because it has been absolutely crazy. Um, it's really nice when you have a partner who does like half the work. <laughs> um, love you, Dave. I can't wait till you're back tomorrow. Um, so, let me show you what we, uh, the really great thing that's been accomplished here. So, so if you remember, our main got stuck. Um, oh, Jesus. Um, up there. And it's been getting stuck for the last year, more and more and more. Yesterday, it took two people, I think an hour and a half, to get the sail unstuck. The plan is today they're going to come and see what the actual issue is because they came pretty late yesterday. So a few things that could be the issue. This is our furling line and this is the inside where the furling goes in and out. The problem is that there are no grooves or anything so these lines slide up and down and they can get trapped and overridden. So, uh, and I was told that there's just too much in here to begin with when it's supposed to be fully empty. So I think that's something they're going to be dealing with. And then this track here going all the way up, I think they're going to check. Um, also discovered, I did not realize this, but there is a spinny guy that's in here that this guy spins off of, like a like like one of these basically, that should be inside of here. That was cracked open, so that's a problem. <laughs> so that needs to be fixed. And actually, this guy. So ooh, I hit my head. So this line, basically, that is our furler. And if you follow it all the way up. The line or the rope that holds it all the way up there. Oh, my finger messed it up. Um, the line that holds it down here, it comes all the way down, and it's this guy. And the problem I was told is at that angle, and oh, 
that angle, let me zoom in a little, that angle is not good. Which, you know, once they're pointed out, <laughs> it made sense, but we don't check up here very often. Stuff works. Um, and so they actually, we have a few extra blocks. We keep extras and we like double check things in general, but we don't look at the minutia of like every little bolt. I think we will start doing that. We're swapping marinas, but I'm not by myself anymore. Guess what? Hello, I've come back. He's alive! <laughs> He's alive! Welcome back, baby! Thank you! Mwah. So yeah, after a lot of time in Costa Rica getting some health issues taken care of, I've returned to the boat, and it's time to get her moving again. Let's go!